Well, you made it to lecture four. Congratulations. If you have uh, not done lecture two, uh, you should stop now and do lecture two because you know, four builds on two. Uh, today in the last uh, options lecture in the series, we'll be talking about multiple option strategies, straddles, straddles with different strike prices called combinations and spreads. Now, uh, you're held accountable for this on your Series 7 uh, top off. So the assumption is you've done some preliminary work on your SIE on options, and you were held accountable for seven strategies. Uh, I'm also going to be uh, adding a couple things for some Series 4s. I'm not going to be going over synthetic options. I'm not going to be going over option order equivalents for Series 4s, but I'm going to do a little bit. Now, you Series 7s, when I'm having a 4 or a 9 discussion, you know, just tune out. You just got to be menu-driven. So when you're paying attention to this conversation, the conversation I'm going to be having is not testable. What is testable is the menu that we're going to be driving our discussion. So anything on the menu that I run with you, I'm going to run a couple menus, one for uh, straddles and one for spreads. That's what's testable. The comments I make along the way are, are just, you know, for your own edification, if you will. U.S. Series 9 sales supervisors are also common uh, uh, as we go along for you. So I'm going to actually do a, a couple, well, maybe one, maybe two. I don't know. I'll do a speak of that. I grab my calculator. Uh, I'll probably do a couple margin calculations for the Series 4s. Uh, you're not held accountable for actually doing the calculation. You're held accountable for recognizing that formula. And again, I'm not going to be doing synthetics or option equivalents, but fours and nines, you should like a multiple option strategies as particularly spreads, particularly credit spreads, because that makes your life a lot easier. And I'll explain why in today's lecture. Okay, so uh, there's a, here's where we're at so far. So, you know, let me just get my annotation tool out. And uh, this was... This was lecture two, and this was lecture three. Now, you know, I could have broken this uh, down a different way. You know, I decided to, you know, make these lectures. Sometimes when I'm teaching a class, I will just do all the speculative strategies first. I mean, one through six, I one through nine there. And in class, I might call that five to six. My point is don't get hung up on the, the numbers. I'm just trying to impose some order on this. Uh, by letting you as a Series 7 top off know that you're held accountable for nine strategies. But the way I broke it up in Lecture 2 or 3 was so that if you were SIE, those were the seven strategies you were held accountable for. And uh, by way of review, uh, we said here you'd be held accountable for knowing suitability. This is a way to generate additional income. And uh, this was a way to protect against a big price decline. And uh, this one, whoop, protect against a big price decline. And, uh, and this one, we like this one. In fact, as a series four or nine, I might not let you short the stock unless you take some of your money and buy a call contract. And so, you know, we talked about how that changes the short stock position. from uh, unlimited risk to limited risk. And that's a nifty arrow to have in our quiver, as we said. And that was uh, lecture three. And, you know, we said the matrix doesn't work on those. And the reason the matrix doesn't work is because those are not option positions. But we did share with you a matrix that works for these uh, other positions, long call, short call, long put, short put. And we did show that for you. And the, the matrix will again work here in a moment when we get going on these multiple option strategies. So it'll be available now. Remember, there's three things that can happen to an option contract. The contract can be traded, the contract can be exercised, and the contract can expire. Now, as a supervisor, I love it when people are doing closing transactions and they're going home. My all-time favorite transaction as a series four or nine is a closing purchase because that is somebody who is eliminating a short position. So that's my all-time favorite uh, ticket to be looking at as a four or nine. Because remember an opening sale means you've, uh, you know, or your potential victim. As a four or nine, I'm really concerned about potential victims. That would be somebody who shorts the call or somebody who shorts the put. Uh, you know, the put I'm not as concerned about as a four or nine because, you know, the worst case in a put if you're short is you're gonna end up paying, you know, this cash equal to the aggregate exercise price for worthless stock. I mean, that's a definable number. But if you agree to sell stock you don't own, a naked or uncovered call, I'm very uh, worried. 
Now, when I was a supervisor, I would make every customer sign a happy letter, a big boy letter, or a big girl letter saying they understand that if they get exercised, they're going to be selling the stock at less than the current market price. You know, that way when they get exercise, they say they don't get that. I'd say, well, here's your, you know, happy letter. Here's your big boy, big girl letter that says you did understand that. Now that, you know, that's the same, by the way, if it's a covered call, but if it's a short call, that means they're gonna have to go into the open market and buy the stock at, you know, less than the current market price. God knows today's environment, you know, on Robin Hood and Webull and, you know, the Reddit options discussion. I can't believe how many people are kind of clueless. I mean, you know, by the way, people are clueless at full service firms too. I said, you know, I had gone once, well, what if I had the stock? I said, well, you had the stock, we wouldn't be having this discussion, right? And you say, well, do you know where I can get the stock? I say, yep, we can go in the open market and buy the stock, 9.30 to four o'clock. He said, well, maybe it's less than the current market price or less than the strike price. I said, well, you're really confused. In a short put, if it gets exercised, what I want your happy letter or big boy, a uh, big girl letter to say is you understand that you'll be buying the stock at less than the current market price. You know, that way when you know that happens, you say you didn't understand that. I'll say, well, here's your letter that says you said you did understand that. And so those are the two that as a supervisor are challenging. And that's why I like spreads because with a spread, I'm gonna you know, establish the choice to do something that will offset that obligation. So my big point here is just as an introduction is that as a supervisor, we should embrace multiple option strategy because particularly spreads, uh, because you know they're they're very helpful in terms of altering the risk reward. Okay, so we're going to be to doing today. So let's just put that down here. This is going to be. Uh, let me clear my slide here. Yeah, I'm trying to say, I think I won't clear the slide. I'll just put this as a lecture four. So that's today's lecture. You know, like I said, I could have, you know, done, organized this with these six speculative strategies. These are six, they're one through, you know, nine here, but six speculative. The vast majority, by the way, of you series sevens, the vast majority of your questions are the basic positions in a covered call. So that's the vast majority. But this is a lecture four. And these are all speculative because remember, speculative, what it means here in terms of our discussion is you don't have the stock. You may end up with the stock through exercise, but you don't start with the stock. You're just speculating on the stock price. As contrasted to the people who are hedging, these are these people over here on the right hand side, because remember they're coming to the markets layoff risk. Okay, so let's clear that up. That was the uh, matrix for one through four, right? So, you know, be careful, be careful. What I mean by be careful is, you know, a lot of people you have different ways of discussing options. So, you know, uh, it's a buffet, you know, if you don't like something at a buffet, don't put it on your tray. So, you know, pick something you know, that works for you. Now I had suggested, that if you were, you know, in lecture two, that you might want to develop a matrix. And if I said in lecture two, you know, we went through all this stuff. And again, I highly recommend you go back to lecture two at any time. In fact, I'd probably watch lecture two and three and four and even one, maybe a couple of times between my test time. But here I'm saying that if you didn't understand options, I said, what can you tell me about a long call? And you said, Dean, when you're long a call, you've paid a premium, you have a choice to buy the stock at the strike price, you're bullish, your max gain is unlimited, your max loss is the premium. You may not have any clue what you just said, but it's technically correct. And so I had to suggest it until the lights go on, because what happens with options, you know, lights go on and they go out again and they go on again, is that you might want to just, you know, have that matrix available, do a data dump on that. I got my break evens on there and there are two types of contracts, calls and puts. You can either buy them or sell them. And so that was our matrix. Now, the matrix, as I mentioned, still works for these multiple option strategies we're going to be discussing today. Now there's the matrix without all the stuff in it, but you know, basically I'm gonna be showing you a multiple option strategy, a straddle. And what we're straddling is that strike price line. I'm gonna show you a long straddle. I'm gonna show you a short straddle. And that's why it's called a straddle because we're straddling that strike price line. And then I'm gonna show you a spread. And a spread is when we're doing this and this we're long and short the same type of contract. We're long a call and we're short a call. I'm gonna have a choice to buy the stock and an obligation to sell the stock. So we have call spreads and I'm gonna show you this. 
what we're spreading, by the way, is the difference in the premiums. I'm going to show you a put spread. So, you know, that's these multiple option strategies. My point is that the matrix still works, right? The matrix still works. In fact, you know, if we're trying to figure out what the dominant leg is, we'll just go to whatever quadrant has the greatest premium. So that's kind of where we're heading in terms of this discussion. So uh, you might want to go back and, uh, you know, uh, review the uh, matrix again, if need be, before we jump in. All right, so the first thing I'm going to show you is a straddle. Now, I think straddles are pretty for straightforward as a test issue on the Series 7. Uh, can you identify a straddle? Now, even if that wasn't a test question, it is. I just told you it's a test question. But even if it isn't, it is. If you can't identify, you don't know what to do next. So, I mean, you know, whether or not it's testable, it is. If you can't identify, you don't know what to do next. Once we've identified a straddle, you know, a straddle with a different strike price is called a combination. Who cares? What I mean, who cares for test purposes? I mean, what I mean by that is we're not going to do anything different. We're going to do the same thing we would do if it was a, you know, a straddle. We're going to calculate the break evens. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to take the strike price plus the total premiums, and that's going to give us our upside break even. And we're going to have to take our uh, strike price less total premiums, and that'll give us our downside break even. Now, if you only remember one thing about options, remember this lecture two, call up call up and put down, call up and put down. And then we're gonna determine where it's profitable. Where is the straddle profitable? We have a great mnemonic for that, that's called silo. We're gonna determine if it's short a straddle, if it's short a straddle, we're gonna want the market price of the stock to be inside of the two break evens. And if it's long a straddle, we're gonna want the market price outside of the two break evens. I'm gonna show that to you in just a sec. And then the last test question is when do we use the straddle? We use a straddle when we're expecting volatility, but direction is uncertain. That would be a long straddle or a short straddle when we think it's gonna stay within the trading range. All right, so let's get started on the straddle. Now, uh, I had highly recommended that when you get options positions, you know, uh, following my, what I practice, what I preach here. Let me get myself a smaller font. Uh, I think what you should do is just say, okay, what am I looking at? You're looking at a choice to buy the stock at the strike price. You know, there's two legs. These are called legs, not testable, but that's called a leg. And then I'm looking at another, ooh, uh, that's a choice to sell. Let me fix that. There is a choice to buy, but that's the upper leg. So this is a choice to sell the stock at the strike price. And this is a choice to buy the stock at the strike price. XP means, XP means strike price. And so I've got two choices there. You know, uh, what I'm straddling, by the way, again, what I'm straddling is the strike price line. So here's Apple. Uh, Apple uh, strike price is, uh, oh, wait, looks like I need to fix that. It should say, let me get my. What we're straddling here is a strike price at 130. So let's fix that. Anyway, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, again, uh, I like to get my T fired up. So I'm looking at a long straddle. So I've identified it in terms of my matrix. In terms of my matrix, there I am over there, right? Whoop. I'm straddling. Trying to get back my. I'm straddling the strike price line, right? The strike price here is 130, and that's what I'm straddling there on an Apple. I have a choice to buy the Apple at 130, and I have a choice to sell the Apple at 130. I paid four points uh, for the choice to buy. I paid uh, four points for the uh, choice to. Uh, so, and so if I make my T, which I'm a big fan of, if I want to track money in and out of the account, uh, 
you know, if I get my T fired up here, let me see, let's put my T here. I paid uh, four points. I paid five points. That's dollars out. And so I'm out a total of nine points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. And so my upside break even is going to be 139. So my upside break even is 139. Remember, strike price plus total premium, strike price minus uh, total premium. I'm bu buying volatility, I'm, but I'm uncertain about the direction. So, you know, if I was just buying a call, I'd be buying upward volatility and my break even would be 134. You know, if I was buying downward volatility, my break even be 125, but I don't know. So I'm doing both here. My downside break even is going to be 130 minus 9. 121 is my downside break even. Now, nobody does things to break even. People do things to uh, make money. All right, so first test question is, can we identify the straddle? It's a straddle because we're long two different type of contracts or short two different type of contracts. That's what a straddle is, a straddle, straddle and strike price. You know, we have calls and puts, those are the two types. So second test question is, can you calculate the break evens? The way we do that is we total the premiums, we total the premiums, nine, and we add it to the call and we subtract it from the put. We add it to the call and we subtract it from the put. So we get our upside break even of 139. We get our downside break even of uh, you know uh, 121. By the way, here I'll just show you that that's true. I'm just gonna make a T over here. And so there's my four, there's my five. I'm out nine. If I buy the apple at 121 and I stick it to somebody at 130, which I have a choice to do, I break even. I'm just showing you that indeed that is the break even, right? Or another way to think about it, is if I uh, buy the app at 130 and I sell at 139, I break even. So I'm just illustrating that indeed that is the break even. And then the fourth test question about a straddle is where is it profitable? And we said, we got a great mnemonic for that, short inside, short inside, long outside, long outside. We want the uh, straddle, we want the stock to be either above 139 or below 121. You know, I don't know what it's gonna do here. And so when do I use it? When I expect volatility. You know, uh, I've been pretty successful. Well, I shouldn't say pretty successful. I've also lost a lot of money. But, you know, worst case is when you buy an option, if you're wrong, you're just going to lose your money, right? So, you know, if I buy this straddle, I'm out nine points, nine points on one contract, 900 bucks. So, you know, play money, right? And it's like playing the lottery. In fact, I was counseling one of my clients once. He kept buying option positions and he kept losing his money. His name was John. I said, John, why do you keep, you know, buying these positions and you keep losing your money? I mean, you know, I was trying to convince him that perhaps what he should consider doing is what, the opposite of what he has been doing, because, you know, that's obviously not working so well. And anyways, he said, well, then you can't win if you don't play. <laughs> I said, well, okay, he's quoting the lottery slogan to me. Uh, anyways, uh, there was a company and it was uh, having some real serious problems and they hired a new CEO. And to be honest with you, I wasn't sure whether they were going to, you know, fix the problems or not. I thought, well, this new CEO fixed the problems, the stock is going to go up. So I bought a call. You know, I think it was like three points. And if he doesn't fix the uh, the problems, then the stock is going to go down. So I bought a point, uh, put, and that was four points. So I'm out of pocket seven points. Now I got a built-in mistake here, but my theory is if he doesn't fix the problems, it's, you know, it's going to tank. And if he does, it's going to roar, right? So anyways, uh, the put expired worthless. I have a built-in mistake here, but he did fix the problems and the stock roared. So good news, my call came through for me enough to offset the, the loss on the other leg. One of these legs is not going to work. The worst closing price, by the way, is 130 because then the contracts expire and I lose that nine points. So it's pretty easy again as a four or nine. I don't, you know, people want to buy options are easier to approve because we just ask them, is this money they can afford to lose, right? It's, you know, is it their play money, so to speak? You know, I have a practice question here I wrote for you uh, that's based on a, a uh, one that worked for me. It was a company that was going into court and, uh, and the judge was either going to shut down their technology or not. I said, man, if he shuts down their technology, 
you know, if they lose the patent, I mean, oh my God, the stock's going to tank. But if he upholds the patent, I think the stock is going to roar. So I bought a call and I bought a put. Uh, by the way, that was company A. And then, you know, the person who was suing him for patent infringement was company B. I thought, well, boy, if company B is able to enforce that patent, their stock's going to roar. And if not, their stock's going to tank. And so I bought a straddle on both of them. Both, both, both the puts expired worthless, but the company said it out of court and the stock roared. So it ended up working out. All right, so let's just go over this long one again by way of review. You know, the videos, I'm, I'm less uh, cognitive of a time restraint because you can hit the pause button, you can repeat, you can come back to it. But what if we were in class? I mean, if we were in class, you know, then we have X number of hours to devote to certain topics and, you know, we got to move on. So I guess that's one of the advantages, I guess, of, uh, you know, of what we're doing. Whoop, you don't want to be looking at my mug. Uh, where where are we? We're here. I don't know why it's not letting me. Slideshow. Hold on just a sec. Let me go to my PowerPoint, get my PowerPoint fired back up. There we go. Okay, so that's what we want. And let's go back to Zoom. Let's go back to share screen. And let's go back to slideshow. Okay. Looks like I'm back in business. Woo. <laughs> Working without a net. Uh, I appreciate your patience on these uh, video lectures. Like I said, I have an old fashioned uh, stand and deliver. A uh, person who shows up at a campus. And I used to pride myself on tech company calling me and say, what do you need for your class? I say, I don't need nothing. All I need is a dry erase pen and a, a dry erase board and not the race as we go. Uh, you know, since the pandemic, ugh, you know, uh, I've had to buy into the idea that we're going to have to do PowerPoints and uh, reinvent ourselves, so to speak. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Brian Lee. He's still one of the old fashioned dry erase boards. Him and I go way, way, way back. And uh, I feel upset that he still gets to do the dry race and uh, Dean, not so much. Uh, you know, I gave some thought whether this would be a, a more helpful to have me stand behind this and, and do that dry race board behind us. But uh, I think the slides you know, are a little better for what we want to accomplish in our, our videos. But uh, I highly recommend Brian Lee's videos. He does a great job and it's a uh, very good value. So if you need some help on any of these things, uh, Brian's a good resource as well. Okay. So anyways, uh, back to what we were doing. I just want to review this long straddle before we move on to a short straddle. So first test question is, can we identify it? And we said one way we can identify it is that we're gonna be using our matrix is to say, okay, well, we've done this. We're straddling that strike price line. So that is a long straddle. Test question number two is, can we calculate the break evens? And we said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna total the premiums. I like to use dollars out, dollars in. Uh, some people like to use uh, plus signs or minus signs or debit credit, you know, whatever floats your boat, but I'm gonna take the four and the five, and I'm gonna total the premiums for a total of nine. That's why I'm out of pocket. I told you here we got a problem because this is a, you know, I should have fixed that slide why I went offline there, but oh well. So that's right where we're straddling is 130. And so the second test question, can we calculate the break even? So one, two, three, I need either nine points up. And so test question, my upside break even is 139, or I need nine points down. That's my downside break even. Then we have to determine where it's profitable. Where is it profitable? We said short inside, long outside. You know, the max loss here is nine points, right? Because, you know, worst case is these contracts expire. And so as long as that's nine points, $900, you know, if it was 
10 contracts would be $9,000. So as long as you can afford that. So that's a long straddle. I think, you know, I don't know what, you know how you feel as a student, but I think straddles are pretty straightforward on the test. Can you identify the straddle? Can you calculate the break-evens on the straddle? Can you determine where it's profitable? And then when do you use it, right? That's you know, kind of the four kind of issues. All right, so we have long straddles, but we also have short straddles. So again, I'll follow my own, um, you know, I gotta be a little more conscious. I hope that my picture there isn't messing up your, your view of, this, of, the, of the position. But anyways, what I like to do is I like to underneath it, let's say, okay, what am I looking at? What am I looking at? And so I'm looking at an obligation to buy the stock. That's what that is. Uh, I highly recommend, you know, if you can work on it, if you can get good at, you're not struggling around, struggling with what the contract specifications are to buy the stock at the strike price. Um, and you can track money, you're gonna get a hundred options. You're gonna say, boy, give me, you know, more than 20 of these things. And that is an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. You know, I had a student boy, this guy is a very bright guy. And trust me, he's, he's even, he's a lot smarter than Dean. I mean, if you know, if I hadn't been doing this a long time he would be way ahead of me intellectually on this stuff. But uh, you know, he had a process and what I was so proud of him is he stuck to the process. Even though I knew that he was able to eyeballing it really quickly and just jumping to the, you know, the conclusion and he'd be right. He was just very disciplined about how he went about, uh, you know, set about his process. So, you know, process is important. So whatever process it is, doesn't have to be the process I'm recommending to you. You know, I had a woeful student, you know, she had her own way of doing it. But, you know, I was saying, well, do you, how's that working for you? <laughs> she wasn't getting right answers at that point. You know, maybe we want to reconsider what you're, what you're doing. All right. So the first thing we've got to be able to do is we've got to identify that as a short straddle. So again, you know, uh, you can use, if you're going to do the uh, matrix, you can say, okay, well, let me see what I am doing on my matrix here on my matrix. I'm uh, doing this and this. So that is a short straddle. So that's test question number one. It's a short straddle. The next test question is, can I calculate the break-evens? Can I calculate the break-evens? So, you know, I like to use a T. So maybe I take my T and I like to use dollars out versus dollars in. And I say, okay, well, that's four and that's five. You know, some people like to subtotal it. Some people don't. Uh, so I tend not to subtotal sometimes just because I don't like introducing in things into my T that aren't a function of, you know, trading, but you know, it's not, it's again, a personal decision, but you want you to total that up. So we've totaled the premiums. And so now we got to get the break even. So the way we get the break even remember is strike price plus total premium or strike price minus total premium, right? How do we calculate the break evens? We use strike price plus total premium, strike price minus total premiums. All right. So, uh, we're going to take our strike price. And remember here, I'll have to fix that slide. We're, we're straddling is not 135. We're straddling 130. And so uh, we are, have a little bit of a cushion here. We have a little bit of a cushion, right? So that's my nine points. So even if I'm wrong and the stock moves against me, I still can uh, sustain some movement. There's my upside break even. Please know it's the same break even whether you're long or short. It doesn't matter where you want it in relationship to that, right? So, anyways, and then I get my downside break even, even if it moves against me. You know, by the way, I'll just illustrate that. I'll just illustrate that. Uh, and there's my downside break even. Same break even, by the way, just no matter where you want it. And so here's my T. There's my four. There's my nine. If I buy the stock at 139, the Apple, and I deliver at 130. I break even. I'm just showing you that indeed we break even. You know, if um, I'm just showing that if we break even, if uh, I have to buy the stock, so I got four and I got five, and if I somebody sticks the apple to me at 130, I'm the put E, and I sell at 121. I'm just showing that indeed that's the break even. So I'm just illustrating. You don't have to do that, but I'm just illustrating that uh, to you as being the break even. So we've identified this as a short straddle. We've uh, calculated our upside uh, break even and our downside break even. So the third thing we got to be able to do, the third thing we got to be able to do is determine where it's profitable. Where is it profitable? 
And we got a great mnemonic for that. We got a great mnemonic for that. Silo, short inside, long outside. If it's a short straddle, we want the market price of Apple to be between 139 and 121. That's where we want the price of uh, Apple to be, right? So inside the two uh, break-evens. Now, can you see a potential problem with the straddle, a short straddle? Can you see a potential problem with a short straddle? Yeah, the short straddle has unlimited risk, right? It has unlimited risk because how far outside of the break even could Apple go? I mean, it could go you know, outside that. Now, listen, good news for you. In, in your Series 7 top off, you only have nine strategies. You're not going to get tested on condors and butterflies and all kinds of other things. But you know what I might want to consider is you know putting a long straddle outside my short straddle. That's not testable. It's just, you know, there's only nine. But outside of your test, poof, I highly recommend Options as a Strategic Investment by Lawrence McMillan. It's a thousand pages on option strategies. So if you decide you like options, maybe that's something you need to do. Uh, P.S. I highly recommend too, uh, Fridays at 2 p.m. Uh, CNBC has 2 p.m. my time, which is Las Vegas time, Pacific time. Uh, they have a show called Options Action. And uh, I think it's very productive to watch. It's you know 20 minutes if you tape it, you don't have to watch the commercials. And they have beautiful graphics. And uh, most of the time they're doing multiple option strategies and you know, I would tell you that if you can understand what they're talking about, you should be in pretty good shape. If not, maybe you need to do some more work. Okay, so uh, what's our fourth thing? We Where, where do we use this? We uh, expect to stay this. Uh, short styles are very seductive. Do you think Apple's going to stay between 121 and 139 between now and the third Friday in March? If so, there's a way to profit. That's a short straddle. So again, um, I think short straddles are pretty straightforward. Uh, on your test, can you identify a straddle? Can you identify a straddle? Can you determine, uh, can you calculate the break-evens? Uh, call up, put down, strike price plus total premium, strike price less total premiums. Where's the start straddle profitable silo? And when do you use that straddle? When do you use the straddle? And so let's just clear this line. And uh, let's just go back to the slide. So here we go. There's our long straddle. There's our short straddle. Right, that's what we want. And as I mentioned, I got a little problem there on that slide. That's one third is what we're strategizing. All right, let's look at our next strategy. Let's look at our next strategy. So pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward. Oh, I, I wrote a test prep question for you. Uh, I like this one. ABC Corporation is in litigation over a patent infringement. Your customer believes that prevails that ABC stock will rise much higher. Well, now if that's what you thought, you'd do this, right? You'd buy a call. And if ABC loses in litigation, he thinks the stock is going to be much lower. Where if that was the case, you'd do that. But the point is the customer here doesn't know which way. He's saying, oh, I think it's either going way up. What option strategy would you recommend? And what you would recommend is a long straddle. I think it's a very good example of a test question. We said the four test issues are, can you identify a straddle? Can you calculate the break-evens? Can you determine where it's profitable? And when do you use it? So pretty straightforward. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna show you, the next thing I'm gonna show you is a, a spread. And what you're spreading is the difference in the premiums. What you're spreading is the difference in the premiums. And uh, if you do my menu, you got my guarantee that whatever they wanna know, you've got the answer. And so what we're gonna be doing in these uh, spreads is we're gonna identify the spread, very similar. And a spread, whoop, let's get a text box here. A spread is when you are long and short the same type of contract. You're long and short the same type of contract. Remember there's two types of contracts, uh, calls and puts. Long and short, the same type of contract. Again, in terms of our, and in uh, terms of our matrix, I'm going to show you a call spread, long and short a call, and then I'm going to show you a put spread. That's what I'm going to be showing you. Now, uh, I'm going to be showing you vertical or price spreads because that's what you're going to see on, on your exam. But there's also a diagonal spreads. Diagonal spreads is when the strike 
and the months are different. And there's also horizontal or calendar spread where the months are different. Now, the only thing I would bring up on that for those of you who are fours or nines or even sevens in that regard to be, you know, I'm wishing for you on the seven, a, you know, dream draw, everything you studied shows up, but, you know, sometimes you get a face of death draw where you go, oh my God, you know, you're struggling to get, get through the thing. Um, just pay attention to the expiration dates. I mean, if you have a, uh, a spread, a horizontal calendar spread or a diagonal spread where the you know, strikes are different and the months, you just wanna make sure that your long option, the expiration date is after your short option because otherwise you're gonna be naked, right? I mean, if you have a you know option that expires, your long-term option expires before your short term, then you're left hanging with a short leg, right? So mm-hmm. kind of a, just a trick question to recognize that in like a call calendar spread that, you know, the long call expires in February and the short call expires in June, you know, he's got a problem there. So, but other than that, so I'm going to be showing you uh, vertical or price spreads. We're going to be uh, determining whether it's a credit or a debit. Credit is more money in than money out. And a debit spread is more money out than in. If we get that right, we can rock and roll. We can rock and roll because we get that right. We're going to know credit expire narrow or debit exercise wide. I'm gonna show that to you, but you'll be out right 100% of the time. So if it's a credit spread, if we determine it's a credit spread, we're gonna want the contracts to expire and we're gonna want the difference in the premiums to narrow, get smaller. That's the hardest part to get. Don't need to get it because credit expired, narrow goes together all the time. Now, if we determine it's a debit spread, more money out than in, we're gonna want the contracts to exercise. And we're gonna want the difference in the premiums, because that's what we're spreading is the difference in the premiums to get larger widen. I'm going to show that to you. I'll probably show you a little more than I would if you were in class, because again, this is video and who cares? We don't have a time constraint, but you know, uh, don't overdose. Don't overdose again here. So then we're going to determine max gain, max loss. Now, a test taking trick is the max gain and the max loss always equals the difference in the strikes. So whatever those two numbers are, they have to equal the difference in the strikes. So if we're looking at a spread and it's 40 and 50, whatever those two, 45, whatever those two numbers are, it's got to equal the difference in the strikes. In fact, that's important enough. Let's get a text box and uh, let's put that in there. So equals the difference in the strikes. That could be a test taking trick that I'll show you. If you get a chance, uh, if you get a chance, you might want to check out my, uh, my lecture where it's called mnemonics or memory aids and test taking tricks on series seven. And I show you how you can use that to get some right answers. Now, I'm going to show this to you at length. We're going to do this in just a little bit. But what, you know, the credit's pretty easy to get or the debit. And then the balance would be your gain or loss. That'll make more sense when we start doing this. I'm just showing you this is the menu. Now, for your series sevens, I want you to pay attention to this menu because I'm going to run a few times with you. And if you run this menu, which we're going to do a few times, you, everything, do everything on here, you've got my guarantee. Whatever they want to know, you've got the answer. We're going to determine the break even. We got a mnemonic for that. And the mnemonic we're going to use is call add to the lower. Call add to the lower. That's what CAL stands for. So that's how we're going to get the break even in a call uh, spread. Call add the lower. We're going to use push. And that stands for put subtract from the higher. Put, subtract from the higher strike. I'm gonna show all of this to you at length. Put, subtract from the higher. Put, subtract from higher. Yeah, and then we gotta determine bullish or bearish. And the way we're gonna do that is the larger premium dominates. And from an earlier lecture, I'll show this to you. Don't get hung up. I'm just showing you the menu here. That'll always be the lower strike call is always going to have, is going to be dominant because lower strike calls always have greater premiums. Lower strike call is dominant. And whoop, and the higher strike put is going to be dominant because the higher strike is always the put with the greater premium. Okay, so um, Again, I wouldn't worry about the menu. I'm just showing you where you know where, what's on the menu, right? So we're going to work our way through the menu. So don't don't have indigestion yet because the meal has not been served. I'm just telling you, this is what we're going to be doing as it relates uh, to spreads. And I said, if you're series uh, seven and you do these things, whatever they want to know, you've got the answer. So let's leg into a spread. So 
this is just a basic option position. This is just a basic option position. And we're gonna use this as our base leg to lay, lay, uh, to, uh, leg into a spread. So let's just review this as a basic option strategy before we do anything. And so as a basic option strategy, because right now it's not a multiple option strategy, it's just a base leg right here. And before we uh, do that, let's just put what we're looking at. Uh, what we're looking at here, is an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. That is what we're looking at there. You know, that's what I like to do. Uh, I like to get uh, oriented on my matrix. In terms of my matrix, I say, okay, what am I doing here? Uh, so far, I'm over here on my matrix. I am short a call. Uh, I like to get my T fired up. I like to get my T fired up, dollars out versus dollars in. Uh, here we have a 130 call at uh, 12. I, I call this my setup, my setup. And, uh, you know, some people are visual people, you know, you don't have to graph, but, you know, here I say, okay, well, if uh, Apple is 130 or lower, 130 or lower, there's a floor there and the contract would expire and I get to keep 12 points. Now, please note that's 12, 12 points on 10 contracts each governing 100 shares. So that's $12,000, that's, that's bueno. That's what I'm hoping, that's what I'm hoping. So my max gain is the premium, even if it moves against me, even if it moves against me, I do have a little bit of a cushion here, right? Here's my cushion. You know, my break even is going to be uh, strike price plus premium. So my break even is uh, 130 plus 12. So my break even is 142. That is my break even. And if I'm wrong, uh oh, that's what I don't like about this position. What I don't like about this position is if I'm wrong. So that's what that looks like as a, a base uh, option position. Now, uh, PS, series fours. This is for series fours only, not sevens and not nines. But you know, uh, there is a problem here. I'm a little concerned with this position. The reason I'm concerned with this is because he's got uh, unlimited risk. So the margin requirement on a naked option is you're gonna have to have 20% of the market value uh, Alexa, turn on light. I just realized I'm sitting in the dark here. Um, I'm going to have to have 20% of the market value. Uh, this is a, whoa, man. Uh, this is uh, 10 contracts. So the market value here, Apple's, let's say Apple, I'll just make this up. Let's say Apple's at uh, 132 right now. So it's a 130 call and Apple's trading at 132. It's two points of the money. So that's 132 grand uh, market value times uh, 20%. And that's 26,400. So, by the way, this is only for series fours. And then you got to have the uh, current premium. And the current premium here is 12 points on 10 contracts is $12,000. And then you can take the amount out of the money because it's not likely that'll be exercised less the out of the money amount. Uh, here, it's not out of the money. So the margin requirement to do this is going to be 38,400 to get this done. Wow. Now that's not something any seven needs to know. Uh, four, you might actually have to calculate at nine. You just got to recognize that formula. Now, what I said is, as, as a, about a spread is one way I can make the 38,400 go away is to implement a spread. Because as a series four, I say, well, listen, if you'll take part of your 12 points and offset your obligation to sell with a choice to buy, that will dramatically affect the amount of money that you're gonna have to come up with. Now that's the in initial margin requirement. So 
the 12 grand is already in your account. So if you wanted to do this, you need to send me $26,400. That's way beyond the seven, but it is nine, four kind of decibel. Now the minimum uh, maintenance on a naked option is 10% of the market value. You guys remember the market value of, of uh, the apple's gonna move around and the current premium. And that's to make sure I can always do the offset, right? You've done an opening sale. So as long as there's always uh, the current premium, I can always do the closing purchase and get you out of that. So, all right. So where are we at right now? Where we're at right now is we've decided that this is very foolish. Uh, we've decided it's foolish because if I'm right, I'm going to make 12 grand. 130 or lower, 10 contracts, expires, and I keep the money. 12 points, 10 contracts, covering 100 shares, 12,000 bucks. That's bueno. Uh, even if I'm wrong, the stock goes up. My break even is strike price plus premium, 142. And then the problem is once it goes past that, I have unlimited risk potential. That's not uh, good either, right? And then uh, beyond the seven, but we've uh, decided that, you know, we're going to have to come with some margin. So if I take some of my money, and that's what I'm about to do, and I establish a choice to buy the Apple at the strike price, I would no longer have unlimited loss, right? So if I add another leg to this thing, which I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna leg into a spread. I'm gonna put in a ceiling, a ceiling. That's what I'm about to do is put in a ceiling. So I only wanna play between here and whatever this strike price is. That would be my ceiling. Options are all about floors and ceilings. All right, so let's leg into a spread. Let's leg into a spread. Let's leg into a spread. All right, so test question number one. Can you identify that as a spread? So basically what we've done now is we've uh, taken part of our 12 points. Let's just go back here. We've taken part of our 12 points. Let's give me a different color here. And I offset this was an obligation. Sell the stock at the strike price. And I have a smart guy that I am. I said, let me offset that with a choice to buy the stock at the strike price. You know, not testable, but uh, I'll talk about floors and ceilings. I'm doing construction. Construction costs money. Construction costs money. So uh, that's what that looks like, right? So test question number one is can you identify that as a straddle? Can you identify that, or excuse me, as a spread? And so we take our, you know, our, our matrix, we say, okay, boom, boom, indeed, I am long and short the same type of contract. So this is a spread, that's test question number one. The next thing I've gotta be able to do is determine whether it's a debit or a credit, a debit or a credit, a debit or a credit. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna net the premiums. And I say, okay, well, let me look at these premiums. This is uh, money I'm out. And this is money that I'm in. You know, some people like to use plus minus sign. So uh, this is a nine point credit. A credit is when you have more money out than in. Now, another way I could do this, another way I could do this, I could get my T fired up. And I could say, okay, here's my 130 calls. Plural, remember there's 10 contracts here. And here is my 145 calls. And so for this, I got, whoop. For this, I got 12 points and I paid out three points over here. So if we net those two numbers. That's a nine point credit spread. So test question number one is, can you identify this as a spread? A spread is when you're long and short, the same type of contract. Test question number two, is it a debit or a credit? The way we do that is we net the premiums. This is a credit spread. Now, once you get credit, you can rock and roll because as we said, once you determine credit, you know, expire and arrow. Those go together all the time. So once we get credit, credit, expire, narrow. Those go together all the time. If the contracts expire, if the contracts expire, that would be good news. So if this is the position in your account and I call you and I say, hey, the contract's expired, 
you say, oh man, I lost three points. I, I, what are you talking about? You say, well, yeah, the 145s. I said, yeah, but that, that's good. It's still okay because if they both expire, you made nine points on 10 contracts. You made $9,000. Expiration is good. By the way, that you'll be right every time. Credit. Any time, by the way, that's not unique to the spread. If you just sold uh, you know, a naked call or you sold a short put or short a short straddle and now we're selling a spread, you always want the uh, contracts to expire so you can keep the money. Uh, next thing we got to do is determine widen or narrow. That's the hardest part to get and you don't need to get it because credit expire and narrow goes together all the time. What we're referring to is the difference in the premiums. What we're referring to is the difference in the premiums. What I've got to be able to do, let me just clear this up. You know, when I establish the spread, when I establish the spread, the difference in the premiums, the difference in the premiums was nine. Hardest part to get. Now, what we're referring to here is if I go to offset this thing, close it out, right? Remember this from the first lecture, the first lecture we did? You know, this was an opening sale, and so you do a closing purchase. This was an opening purchase, so you do a closing sale. So what we're saying here is if I go to close it out, I need those numbers to be smaller. You don't need to get it because, as I said, once you get credit, expire narrow, you will be right every time. So you don't really need to get that, but, you know, oh, well, I'm just showing it to you. I'll just make up a number. Let's say that... Um, I'm going to make this up. So where does this number come from? Dean is just making it up. And I'm going to say that Apple is uh, 136. I just made that up, 136. And I close out at intrinsic value. I'm just showing you the concept of narrow. You don't have to be able to do this. I'm just showing it to you. So the 130 uh, calls now are six and these expire worthless. And I say, listen, when we did the spread, the difference was nine. Now it's six. That's why you made three points. The most it could narrow to is zero. Again, you don't need to do any of that. You just need to know credit, expire, narrow. So we've identified, we have identified the spread. We identified it as a spread. We netted the premiums. We netted the premiums. And we determined that there was a nine point credit spread. You know, again, we said we could also do this with a T, you know, dollars out versus dollars in, you know, dollars out is a minus, dollars in is a plus, you know, whatever floats your boat. I like to use dollars out, dollars in because you're less likely to transpose uh, zero. So the next thing we got to do is we got to determine the gain and the loss. Now, I hope you remember telling you the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes. That's the whole point of a spread. As I'm saying that I want to play between 130 and 145 and I don't want to play no more. Here's 130. That's the strike price of the short call. And remember, that was my obligation to sell. And I've offset that now with a 145 call, a choice to buy. So you know, options are all about floors and ceilings. And so I'm saying I want to play between 130 and 145. I don't want to play no more. So there is 15 points to be made or lost. Now, as I mentioned, if you don't get this, oh my goodness, life is miserable if you don't get this. The gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. The gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. Now, of those two numbers to be made or lost, you already have one of them. Right, so test taking trick. You can eliminate on your exam any two numbers they offer to you is a gain or a loss that don't add up to the difference in the strikes. So one way to proceed is either memorize. Now I would warn you that if you don't understand options, the things you're gonna to have to memorize is continue to compound. And so, you know, it's much easier if you understand things because then you don't need to memorize anything. But if you don't get this, then you're gonna to have to memorize that the maximum loss and a credit spread is the difference in the strikes less the net credit. Yuck, I just think that personally is a mental mess. I think it's easier to say, well, there's 15 points to be made or lost. I spent, uh, collected nine, so I can lose six. I just think that's easier, but 
you know, however you get there, you need to get there. So, you know, when you collect money, let's just put that there. You collect money. The maximum gain is what you've collected. By the way, that's no different. No different than, uh, you know, when you were doing a straddle as well, right? If you short a straddle or you sell a call, so that's my max gain. And this is going to be my max loss. Okay, uh, series fours, uh, series fours and series nines. Now, remember before we did this, uh, I forget what our margin requirement was. Uh, it was what, uh, 130, I'll just and redo it. It was 132 grand times 20%. Uh, plus the current premium, the current premium is the account. So you had to come up with uh, 26,400. Uh, series four, series nines. The reason I love this spread, by the way, is not only is the gain no longer unlimited, but now you, I'm only going to ask you to come up with six grand. I'm going to tell you, listen, if this is, if you're wrong, if you're wrong, this thing blows up, you're going to end up uh, buying the Apple at 145. And you're going to deliver the stock at 130. You're going to lose 15 points. Of the 15 points you can lose, nine's already in your account. So I want you to send me the six. So the margin requirement here, fours and nines, would be the $6,000, the six points on 10 contracts. So, you know, by the way, that 6,000 is a lot less than 26.4, right? So that's another reason somebody might want to do a credit call spread is to get rid of that margin requirement. So the margin requirement here is 15 grand because that's the max loss, 15 points. But of the 15, nine's already in your brokerage account. So send me six. And so that loss, series fours and series nines would be the uh, margin requirement. By the way, that six grand is a lot less, right? As a margin clerk, as a margin clerk, as a four, as a nine, I love this because now there's a floor and there's a ceiling. You know, PS, this should look familiar, right? There's that. But now we don't have 12, we only have nine, right? So, but I still am a big fan here because now there's a floor and there's a ceiling. You know, PS, we haven't done the break even yet, but the break even is gonna be somewhere within that range, which is another test taking trick. Okay, so we've identified the uh, spread. We have determined it was a credit spread. We had determined expire and narrow. We've determined max gain, max loss. We said the max gain, max loss equals the difference in the strikes, test taking trick. You can eliminate anything. So the next thing we gotta do is break even. The next thing we gotta do is break even. And so we said a great mnemonic for break even is cow. And that stands for call, add to the lower. We're gonna take the lower strike, 130. The lower strike. And we're gonna add the net premium. Doesn't matter what's a debit or credit, whatever that net premium is here, in this case, nine and we get our break even of 139. Right, so here was our gain. Let me just put that in here. There's our gain. And there's our loss. You know, the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. So I'll just illustrate that indeed that's the break even. I'll just illustrate that indeed that is the break even. Uh, if I buy the apple at, uh, whoop, if I buy the apple at 139, and I deliver at 130, same dollars out as dollars in. You know, that's one way to proceed. So another way you could do this, by the way, I wouldn't suggest this unless you're really good at options, but the other way I could do this is I could put in the dominant leg and say the dominant leg is my obligation to sell at 130. So the break even is the number that would make the columns balance. All right, so that's another way to proceed is to you know, pick that out. All right, the last thing I gotta do is determine bullish or bearish. Bullish or bearish. I gotta determine what sandbox in my matrix am I playing at? Am I playing here or here in terms of my matrix? 
And the way we do that is larger premium dominates the position. The larger premium dominates the position. And so this, the dominant position here is that short call. This is a bearish spread, a bearish spread. Wow, woohoo. All right, well, let's just review. Let's just review. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. So you, I said, if you did my menu, you've got my guarantee that whatever they wanna know, you've got the answer. So test question number one is, can we identify this as a spread? What we're spreading, by the way, is the difference in the premiums. That's why it's called a spread. I'm spreading the difference. You know, sometimes people gamble. I can get them through options a little quicker because if they're gamblers, they probably bet on a game where they're betting on the difference in the uh, scores, right? What's the spread on the Super Bowl? What's the spread? What do we think the difference in that's going to be? And some people want it to be outside of that. And some people want it inside of that in terms of, you know, volatility. Anyways, uh, here we are. We've identified this as a spread. So the next thing we said we got to do is we got to determine debt or credit. We get this, we can rock and roll because if we get credit, we know credit expire narrow and we know our gain. So that's really a key piece of the analysis. And so we said, there's a couple ways to proceed. We can uh, net the premiums. We can net the premiums. And we determined that we have uh, nine points more in here than out. And that's what a credit spread is. And so once we determine it's a credit, we can rock and roll because we know that we want the contracts to expire and we want the contracts to narrow. That's the hardest part to get. Don't need to get it. Don't need to get it. So here we got nine points that we've collected. Now here's the market price here of Apple. And there's our four. And so there's our nine points. Uh, and we have uh, put in a ceiling here. Our construction costs us money. We got a strike price here of 145. By the way, this part over doing over uh, the, the graphic is not testable. What's testable is can you tell me that's a spread? Can you determine credit, expire, narrow? The next thing we got to do is max gain, max loss. And we know the max gain and the max loss always equals the difference in the strike prices. By the way, that's the whole point of the strategy. I mean, that's the whole point of the strategy is you're saying, I want to play between I'm saying I want to play between there and there and then I don't want to play no more. So we said there's a couple ways to proceed here. We said one way you could proceed. What a mental mess. I personally think it's a mental mess. I mean, we've got our max gain here. We said that when you collect money, the best case is you keep it. Right, so we got our max gain of nine. And we said you can either memorize, yuck, you can either memorize that the maximum loss in a credit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that credit. Or I think an easier way to proceed is to say, well, there's two numbers that add up to 15. Of the 15 points to be made or lost, I have collected nine. And so my max loss is the six. And then by the way, you can just illustrate that if you wanna get your T fired up, you know, dollars out versus dollars in, you can say, okay, well, there's my 12 in, there's my three out. And so let's see, worst case is I'm gonna buy the apple at 145. I'm going to deliver at 130. because that's what that is in English again, right? In English, that is an, a choice to buy Apple at 145, an obligation to deliver Apple at 130. So that's our gain and a loss. Okay, the next thing we got to do is our break even. The next thing we got to do is our break even. And uh, how do we do our break even? We got a mnemonic for that. We've got a mnemonic for that. Our mnemonic is CAL, and that stands for call add to the lower, call add to the lower. And so we're going to take the lower strike. I don't mean lower, you know, on the board here. I just mean the lower strike, 130. We're going to add the net premium. Doesn't matter whether that's a debit or credit. We're going to add that and get our break even of 139. Test taking trick, by the way, it's got to be a number that's somewhere between these two. I mean, that's the whole point of this thing. Is there's 15 points be made or lost, right? And so 139, so you can eliminate them. If it's saying if they offer you like an Apple break, you know, 146 here or, or 129, you can just get rid of that because it's gotta be something within the range. It's gotta be something within the range. All right, so another way you can proceed if you're really good at options, you can plug in the dominant leg 
and to shop the answer set until you got one that made a balance, right? It makes sense, right? If I buy Apple 139, deliver at 130, I lose nine, I got nine, I break even. And then the last thing I got to be able to do in a spread is I got to determine bullish or bearish and the larger premium dominates the position. And so that's what I'm trying to do. So uh, let's uh, go back, let's go back. to our menu, there's our menu. So we identified the spread, we determined it was a credit expire narrow, we got our max gain. I'm just filling this in for our Apple, right? So that's what we determined, our credit was a nine. So nine plus something equals 15. We got our break even of 139 and we determined that it was bearish because a larger premium dominates the position. So when I'm trying to figure out what sandbox I'm in, I'm over there. I'm over there. As I mentioned, it'll always be the lower strike that is the dominant position. All right, so let's do another one. So uh, let's do another one. So here uh, I have a basic option position, a basic option position. This is just a choice to buy Apple at 130. So let's just review this as a basic option position. Uh, I have uh, a choice to buy a thousand shares, 10 contracts of Apple at 130. And that would cost me 13 points, 13 grand. My break even would be 143, strike price plus premium. My max gain is unlimited, max loss is the premium. Now, as a four or nine, I don't really care about this position as much because as long as you got 13 grand, you know, we're done. You know, all those people who are, you know, trading on doing crazy things with options are buying calls. As long as that's money they can afford to lose, you know, more power to them. Uh, I'll take the customer perspective here. I'll take the customer perspective. So as it stands right now, as it stands right now, uh, I got to cover 13 points out of pocket before I break even. Yeah, I don't like that I need 13 points of upward volatility. As you remind you, lecture two, I have to be right about three things here, direction, how far and the timing. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna have to come up with 13 grand, very testable. We don't loan you money to buy an option. So you need to come up with 13 grand. And uh, if Apple is 130 or lower, no intrinsic value. And I'm gonna be out this uh, 13 points. All right, so uh, max gain is unlimited. Max loss is the premium. Hold on, I'm gonna shut the window. I mean, it's Typical, right? I got a guy doing his landscaping. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Oh, all right. A little better. Anyways, um, I don't have 13 grand. Don't tell anybody, but I don't have 13 grand. And it looks like if I don't have 13 grand, I'm not going to be able to play because that's what it's going to cost to play this game. And I don't like that I need 13 points of upward uh, volatility to cover my out-of-pocket costs. So I said, you know what I think I'll do is I think I'll, I'll sell some higher strike uh, calls to help me pay for the lower strikes. You know, maybe I can reduce my out-of-pocket money and I can play because I don't have 13 grand. So let's see uh, what I'm going to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell the 145s to help me pay for the 130s. Pretty cool. By the way, the conversation is not testable. What's testable is can you identify that as a spread? And so again, let's uh, see what we're looking at. We're looking at a choice to buy the stock at the strike price. And an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. So test question number one, is this a, a straddle? Is it a, an alligator? Is it a butterfly? Is it a condor? Is it a spread? You say it's a spread. So test question number one is, can you identify this as a spread? Test question number two, can you determine whether it's debit or credit? Debit or credit, remember how we do that? We're gonna net the premiums. We're gonna net the premiums. Money out versus money in. Hey, pretty bueno, not testable, but I lowered my out-of-pocket cost. I lowered my out-of-pocket cost 
from 13 points to six points, six thousand dollars. And now Dean can play. Now I like that as well, by the way, before my max loss was going to be $13,000, but now I can only lose six. P.S. Series fours, series four, series nines. You know, what do you think the uh, margin requirement is going to be here? I'm going to want the $6,000, right? So, you know, we're done, right? So kind of cool. Uh, that's By the way, as a supervisor, I like it better too, because the guy now loses not as much, right? Before he could have lost 13 grand, now he can only lose the six. All right, so uh, we've identified it as a spread. We've determined it's a debit. Now, once we get debit, we can rock and roll because debit exercise widen goes together all the time. You want to do the do. When you're wide like Dean, you need to exercise. You need to exercise. I joke. Can't see my belly here, but in some cultures, that's a sign of wealth and prosperity. <laughs> Unfortunately, not ours. I'm going to explain that to you, but you know, that uh, widen is the hardest part to get. And you don't need to get it because, you know, it goes again all the time. Let's get our tea fired up here. So uh, we've got a, a 130 call and we got a 145 call. And so let's get that fired up. And let's see, the 130 call we paid 13 for. And the 145 call we brought in uh, seven for that. So there's our T. Uh, if they get exercised, I'd be buying the stock at 130 and selling at 145. That sounds bueno. That sounds good. Now, remember, the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. Now, that's the whole point, by the way, of a spread. You know, here's our Apple at 130. There's our 130 call contract. And now we have a 145 call contract. And I'm saying I want to play between here and here. Whoop. And then I don't want to play no more. Right, that's the whole point of the spread. Options are all about floors and ceilings, not testable, but options are all about floors and ceilings. So if the contracts get exercised, that'd be great because that means I buy the Apple at 130 and I sell the Apple at 145. I make 15 points less than six. So exercise is a wonderful thing. It would be good. Um, widen is the hardest part to get and you don't need to get it because widen and exercise go together all the time. How often they go together all the time. Now, what we're referring again to is the difference in the premiums. What we're referring to is the difference in these premiums. So remember this from uh, earlier option discussions. If I offset, that's what we're talking about here. What are the differences in these numbers? When I did the spread, the difference was six. And so I got to be able to close this thing out, offset and have more than six. I need the six to be a bigger number that's what I'm out of pocket. Hardest part to get, by the way, you don't need to get it because debit exercise widen goes together all the time. Goes together all the time. So here, uh, let's say I'll just make up a number. Let's say Apple is uh, 144. Apple is 144. And I close out at intrinsic value. I close out at intrinsic value. So the 130 with Apple 144 is 14 points and the 145 expires worthless. So when I did the spread, the difference was six. Now the difference is 14. And that's why I made eight points. Hardest part to get, don't need to get it because it goes together all the time. All right. So uh, debit exercise widened. Now we got to do our gain and our loss. We got to do our gain and our loss. Our gain and our loss. So we have our loss. We said test taking trick, test taking trick. We said that whatever the gain and the loss in the spread is always equals the difference in the strikes. So once again, if, oh, oh, you know, if you don't get this, then you're going to have to memorize a bunch of stuff. I just think it's easier to know, well, there's 15 points to be made or lost. There's the 15. Uh, I spent of that. I spent of that 15 points. I spent six. So that leaves of the six, whatever these two numbers are, remember they equal 15. That's the whole point of a spread is I wanna play between those two numbers. Of those two numbers, I already have one of them. I already have one of those numbers. It adds up to 15. And so that number is nine. Now, if you uh, don't want to, if you don't want to, 
you know, do it that way. You don't want to say, well, there's 15 points to be made or lost, and I have, uh, you know, spent six, I can make nine. Then you need to memorize yuck. You need to memorize the maximum loss of debit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that debit. I personally just think that's a mental mess. But however you get there, you know, you need to get there. As we said, the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes, right? There we go. We said whatever those two numbers are, they're going to equal 15. In this case, we've determined it's a debit spread. We have got the net debit here of a six. And so whatever those two numbers are, they add up to 15. All right, so here we are working this thing out. So we've determined that this is a debit spread. We went to exercise widen. We've got our gain. We've got our loss. The next thing we need is our break even. Our break even is going to be cow. And that stands for call add to the lower. Call add to the lower. So we're going to take the lower strike price, the lower strike price, which in this case is 130. And we're going to add the net premium, which in this case is six. And again, it doesn't matter what's a debit or credit. In this case, it's a debit. And we get our break even at 136. Uh, I can just prove that to you, by the way, right? If I buy the apple at 130, which I have a choice to do, and I sell at 136, I would make six points. I spent six points. I break even. I'm just showing that indeed that's the break even. Nobody does things to break even. So what we need to know is where do we want the apple in relationship to, in relationship to this number? And where the larger premium dominates the position. The larger premium dominates the position. So this uh, dominant position here is a long call. And so this is bullish. By the way, the lower strike call will always be the dominant position. A test taking trick, test taking trick. It's just a trick that works all the time. In any spread, bulls stands for because you are long the lower strike. In any spread, if you are long the lower strike, you are a bull. Doesn't matter whether it's a debit, credit, call, put, doesn't matter. It's just a trick, bulls, because you're long the lower strike. We said the larger premium dominates. So in our matrix, we're trying to figure out what's going on. And over here, remember, we're 13. Over here, we're a seven or six, I think. It was a seven. So this is a bullish transaction. All right, so that's uh, what that looks like. Let's just clear it up. All right, so what are you going to be asked on the test? You're going to be asked, can you identify the spread? Can you determine credit or debit? Uh, expire or exercise, narrow or widen? We have a good do, do, good mnemonic, do, debit, exercise, widen, Mountain Dew, like Mountain Dew, or just do it like Nike. Or when you're wide, you need to exercise, you know, whatever you get. Uh, so anyways, then we uh, do credit or debit, expire or exercise, narrow or widen, max gain, max loss, break even, bullish or bearish. If you do that menu, you've got Dean's guarantee that whatever they wanna know, you've got the answer. So the first thing we have to do is identify this as a spread. And so, you know, the way we do that is a spread is when you're long and short, when you're long and short, the same type of contract. So this is a spread. The next thing we gotta do is net the premiums to determine whether it's a debit or a credit. That's kind of huge because if we get that right, we can rock and roll. The bars I'm just putting there is just the absolute value. We don't worry about it, but that's six points out. Uh, by the way, that means it's a debit. And that means we want the contracts to exercise. We want the contracts to widen. How often will we be right? Every time. Every time. So we've determined it's a spread. We've determined it's debit. Exercise widen. Now we got to determine gain or loss. The gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes. And so there's 15 points to be made or lost, right? Here's the market value. There's my four of 130. There's my ceiling at 145. And that's the whole point of the spread. I'm saying I want to play between those two numbers and then I don't want to play no more, right? That's the whole point of a spread. Uh, here, I lowered my out-of-pocket cost. Now I only need six points of volatility to break even instead of what it used to be 13 points. So that's bueno. Uh, let's see, my max gain, max loss. Now, you can either memorize uh, that the maximum gain in a debit spread is the difference in the strikes, the difference in the strikes, less the net debit. I personally think that's a mental mess. I think it's easier just to know 
that whatever those two numbers are, they have to add up to the difference in the strikes. And, you know, I just think that's easier. You know, but however you get there, you need to get there. So now we've got our max gain. We've got our max loss. Our next thing is uh, break even, and we're going to use CAL. That stands for call, add the lower. We're going to take the lower strike. We're going to add the net premium to get our break even of 136. And then, uh, by the way, you know, you can prove this with a T. I mean, I could plug this into a T. Now I can say, okay, well, there's a seven, there's a 13. The dominant leg is my choice to buy Apple at 130. And so I need a number that would make the columns balance. I can shop the answer set and come up with that. Anyways, uh, break even is 136. And the last thing I could do is determine bullish or bearish. You can either use the bulls trick because you're long the lower strike. The uh, lower strike, the larger premium dominates. This is a bullish bet. All right. Well, uh, as I said, if you do all those things, you've got my guarantee that whatever they want to know, you've got the answer. There is that menu. There is that menu. So if you identify it, you determine uh, credit or debit. Here we determine debit. Then we rock and roll. Debit exercise widen. We know that the gain and loss equals the difference in the strikes. We're going to use Cal. And we determined that this was a bullish bet. All right, let's do, uh, let's do another one. All right, so uh, we're changing gears here a little bit. We're changing gears a little bit. Uh, this is a uh, basic option position again, a basic option position. And so let's put that here. This is a obligation to buy the stock at the strike price. Once again, series four or series nines, uh, you know, we love spreads because right now without the spread, you know, this client could end up having to buy a thousand shares of Apple at 130 when it's, you know, worthless and that could be a problem. Now, this was my idea, test question solicited. I said, hey, Mark, why don't we sell 10 of the 75 puts for 13? We'd get 13 grand. If I'm right, the stock's 75 or higher, the puts expire, we walk with the money. And that's exactly what happened. His idea. He calls me and says, hey, Dean, I can get 20 points for the 240 puts. I said, Mark, if you sell the 240 puts, 10 of them, you're obligating yourself to buy 1,000 shares of that stock at 240. Now, you do have in your account, I'm seeing, Mark, that you have 240 grand. You do indeed have cash equal to the aggregate exercise price, so we're not going to have to do that 20% thing. But, you know, this is very foolish. I said, Mark, if you're going to do this, why don't you take some of your money and buy yourself some lower strike puts just in case this thing blows up and somebody sticks it to you, you can stick it to the next guy. Now, you might want to consider a credit put spread. Now, the guys in the country club that were trading, you know, along with him, I got them to do the credit put spread instead of the, you know, naked puts, and the stock went to 120, you know, so he had to buy a thousand shares at 240 of a $220 stock. That's a $120,000 loss on the stock, less the premiums down hundred grand. It was when I called him at his cabin. He said, Dean, didn't I tell you never to bother me in my cabin? I said, well, you did, but I thought this would be something he'd want to talk about. Uh, oh, well, he said, well, he, you know, he signed his big boy letter and he said, well, Dean, it's only loss in my cell. And if I do, I can use the loss. I go, wow, I wish I lived in your world. In my world, I'd be upset. You know, he claimed to be a big boy. Then when I came over to his house for dinner, he goes, hey, Dean, don't bring up those, those, those puts with my wife. It's not a topic of good discussion. All right, so let's just look at this. So uh, here, what I don't like is I have a little bit of a cushion here again. So in terms of looking at this position, you know, here's my cushion. You know, but at some point, then you know, I got a problem because at some point it goes below that and, you know, looking all the way to zero. And so in terms of my T, so max gain is $13,000. Uh, max loss is strike price less premium to zero, which in this case is, uh, I'm terrible at arithmetic, so you know I'd use my calculator, 130 minus the 13, $117 a share, 117 grand is my max loss. Uh, my break even is uh, 130 minus uh, 13, 130 minus 13, 117 is my break even. Now series fours and nines, remember, uh, I'm going to make you come up with a 20% of the market value. So let's do that, right? 
That's another reason I love spreads because spreads, you know, lower the risk and they also lower the out of and the margin. So the margin requirement, not for you fours, this is intestable, but for you, or excuse me, for your sevens, but for fours, uh, I'm going to need Apple, let's say again, is at 132. So that's 132 grand uh, times 20%. Uh, that's 26,400, 20% of the market value, plus the current premium. I'm going to make you leave that in the account. And then it's uh, 132, so I'm going to let you subtract the amount that it's out of the money, right? Because it's not likely right now it's going to be exercised, and so you'd need to come up with 24.4. Do they actually do this trade? Or cash equal to the accurate exercise price is even better, but... That would be the minimum. And then remember to maintain the account, the position, you're gonna to have to have 10% of the market value plus the current premium. So, you know, uh, again, that would be if you're a series four. Series nine, I'm not gonna make you do the calculation, I'm just gonna ask you to recognize it. All right, so this is an obligation to buy the stock at the strike price, which usually throw people for a loop. And so, you know, it behooves me, it behooves me to take some of my money and buy a lower strike put just in case, right? To offset this risk. And so what we're gonna do now is leg into a spread. We're going to leg into a spread. Remember spread is when you're long and short, the same type of contract. So now, test question number one is we have a spread. And the spread is when you're long and short, the same type of contract. So test question number one, that is a spread. Test question number two, is it a debit or a credit? Is it a debit or a credit? So the way we do that, remember, is we say, okay, well, that's 13 in and that's two uh, out. And so this is a credit spread, credit meaning more money in than out. So I have a net credit here of 11 points. We said when we collect money, Best case is we're going to get to keep it, right? So whether you're short a call, you're short a put, you know, short a straddle, short a spread, you agree to be a potential victim, nobody victimizes you, and you walk with the money. And we said once we do that, we can rock and roll because we want the contracts to expire. We want the contracts, the difference to get smaller, narrow, hardest part to get, don't need to get it. We know that the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes. So there's 15 points to be made or lost. You know, here is our 130. And now we're close saying we want to play between here and here, and then we don't want to play no more. There's 15 points to be made or lost. Options are about floors and ceilings. There's a ceiling 130, 130 or higher, contract expires, and there's a floor at 115. So we said the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes, always equals the difference in the strikes. Uh, by the way, ooh, make sure you can do the math correctly. 15, that's not correct, right? <laughs> My arithmetic was uh, incorrect there. By the way, much better risk reward ratio. Uh, series fours, uh, series fours, you can either memorize that the maximum loss in a credit spread is the difference in the strike less than that uh, credit. Or you can say, well, there's 15 points that we made or lost. I collected 11, so I can only lose four. I just think that's an easier way to proceed. But you know, however you get there, you need to get there. Uh, please note the margin requirement series fours and nines, this is much better. Is I'm gonna want you to send me four grand, four points on 10 contracts. And that's a lot less money, right? So I'm gonna make you leave the 11 in there and then the, the margin call is gonna be for the risk, right? The risk here is four grand. So uh, we love spreads. We love, particularly love credit spreads because it changes the risk reward in a favor of the click customer. So uh, wonderful. And then we love it when options expire. So, okay, so we got our gain, we got our loss. Uh, next thing we gotta do is determine our uh, break even, our, our, excuse me, max gain, max loss, break even. We're gonna use push. And that stands for put, subtract from the higher, put, subtract from the higher. So we're gonna take the higher strike, in this case, 130, and we're gonna subtract the net premium, which in this case is 11, and we get our break even. By the way, it doesn't matter if it's a debit or credit, whatever it is, you know, call up, put down. 
and we get our break even. So let's see, I got my cushion here. The break even, by the way, test taking trick. We know the break even has got to be some number between 130 and 115, right? The break even is 119. So if, uh, if somebody sticks it to me at 130 and I sell it at 119, I lose 11, I got 11, I break even. And then remember the last thing I got to be able to do, so one. 19, remember it's gotta be a number in between there. The last thing I could do is determine bullish or bearish. And the way I do that is the larger premium, right? The larger premium, the, whoop, the larger premium here is a short put. And so this is a bullish spread. By the way, remember you could also use bulls because you were along the lower strike. Anytime you're along the lower strike, it is a bullish spread. That's just a trick, but it works all the time. As a you know uh, supervisor, I just love this transaction. I love this transaction. So here is our 130. That's our ceiling. And then we put in a floor at 115. We uh, got 11. We can lose four. Kind of cool, right? So by way of review, we identified it. We got our net premium of nine. We said credit expire narrow. We said our gain and loss is 15. Our loss is six. We got our break even. And we determined that it was bullish. So if you do that menu, what if they want to know? You've got the answer. All right, so we did that. Uh, there's our menu we just did. There's our menu we just did. By the way, let's just clear this up and do the one we did. Uh, we had identified it as a spread, a put spread. We had determined that it was a credit spread, so we wanted the contracts to expire. We wanted the difference in the premiums to get smaller, narrower. That's the hardest part to get, don't need to get it. We determined that the credit was 11, and we said that whatever those two numbers are, they add up to that. We got our break even by using push, put, subtract from the higher. And then we determined that it was bullish because the larger premium dominates or because we were long the lower strike. All right, let's do uh, one more and we'll call it, a, call it a day. So this is again, just a basic option position. Don't tell anybody, but Dean doesn't have 13 grand. And it looks like if I don't have 13 grand, I'm not gonna be able to play. I need 13, grand, 13 points of downward volatility to break even. I don't like that. So 130, excuse me, 130 minus 13. My break even is 117. I don't make money till it goes below that. And, uh, you know, so it doesn't look like Dean can play because I just told you I don't have 13 grand. So I got to figure out a way to lower my out-of-pocket cost because maybe I can still play. So if I can come up with a way to have less money out-of-pocket, two great things will happen. I'll have less risk and I'll draw the break even closer to me. It's more likely I'll be able to make money if I don't have to have as much volatility. And so what I decide to do is sell the lower strike puts to help me pay for the higher strike puts. And so test question number one is can you identify this as a spread? Test question number two is can you determine whether it's a debit or a credit. And we said the way you do that is you net the premiums. And so this is a seven point debit spread. Once we have the debit, by the way, we have our max loss, right? And we know that when we have debit, we know that we want exercise, we want widen, that goes together all the time. We know that the uh, break even, or excuse me, the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes the difference in the strikes. So we can either memorize, we can either memorize that the maximum loss, or excuse me, the maximum gain in a debit spread is the difference in the strikes less the net debit. Or I could say, well, there's 20 points to be made or lost and I spend seven. By the way, that's pretty cool that now I only need seven points out of pocket to uh, break even right now, boom. It's easier for me to make money if all I gotta do is cover seven points out of pocket instead of what used to be 13 points out of pocket. You know, I'm saying I want to play between 130 
in 110 and then I don't want to play no more. We said that's the whole point of a spread is I want to play between those two numbers. All right, so um, by the way, I could just prove the max gain. I, if I uh, somebody sticks the stock to me at 110, because that's what I'm obliged to do is buy 110 and I sell it at 130, which I have a choice to do, that'd be bueno, right? Because I would make 20, I spend seven, so I make 13. I'm just illustrating it, right? That's the, my obligation. That's my choice. All right, so uh, break even, we're gonna use push. That stands for put, subtract from the higher. We're gonna take the higher strike. We're gonna minus seven. By the way, it's a lot easier for Apple to go down seven than it is for Apple to go down 13. And so that's a wonderful thing. So my break even now is 123. And that's a great thing. By the way, it, it, way beyond the test, but in a debit spread, all you're, what you're doing, you're two, 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 doing two things in a debit spread. You're lowering your out-of-pocket cost and therefore lowering your risk and you're drawing the break even closer to you, less volatility that's gonna be needed. That's what's going on in a debit spread. In a credit spread, what you're doing is giving up some of your gain and putting in you know, either the floor or the ceiling, you're offsetting your obligation with a choice. So that's kind of what's going on. Anyway, so the most I can make now is 13 points, right? The gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. And the last thing is bullish or bearish. The larger premium dominates. So when I'm trying to decide what quadrant I'm playing in, I'm playing over here, right? Uh, the other way you could do that is because you're not long the lower strike. You're not long the lower strike, right? So, you know, there's a couple of ways to go, go with that. Uh, by the way, the, the higher strike put is always dominant. So lower strike call contracts are always dominant and higher strike puts are always dominant spreads. Because remember from lecture two, maybe lecture one, uh, lower strike call contracts always have greater premiums and higher strike put contracts always have greater premiums. Okay, so we said the menu was again, if you do my menu, you've got my guarantee that whatever they wanna know, you've got the answer. Can you identify a spread? Can you determine credit or debit? Because boy, if you get that, you can rock and roll, right? If you get credit, you know, expire and arrow. And if you get debit, you know, debit exercise widen. By the way, that's the hardest part to get. Don't need to get it because it goes together all the time. I've shown it to you a couple of times, the difference, you know, closing it out, but I wouldn't worry about it. We said the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes. So whatever those two numbers are, they add up to the difference in the strikes. And of those two numbers, you're going to have one of them, right? You're either going to have this one or this one when you net the premiums. And so that means you can either memorize, yuck, that the maximum loss in a credit spread is the difference in the strikes. You can memorize that the maximum loss in a credit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that credit, yuck. I just think it's easier to know whatever the two numbers are, they add up to this. But, or you can memorize that a debit spread, the maximum gain is the difference in the debit, difference in the strikes minus the net debit. I personally just think it's easier to do that. I guess maybe I should just before we call it a day, just in case you're one of those people that wants to memorize, I'll go ahead and give you the text box for it. You know, maximum loss and a credit. Let me change the color, get a better color here. Maximum loss, a credit spread is the difference in the strikes minus the net credit. And if you want to know, uh, memorize, I don't know why you would, I just think it's easier to know the difference, but the maximum gain in a debit spread is the difference in the strikes minus or less uh, the net debit. I personally just think it's easier to know that. And then Cal, we got break even call up, Cal and push test taking trick. It's gotta be something within the range, somewhere between the two strikes. Cal stands for call add to the lower, push stands put subtract from the higher. We said the other way you could proceed is make a T, plug in the dominant leg, assuming you set up the T correctly. And uh, you could just shop the answer set till you plug a number in that makes a balance. And then we said the last thing you gotta do is bullish or bearish. And we said the way you do that is the larger premium dominates. The lower strike call will always have a greater premium. It'll always be dominant. A higher strike put will always be the dominant leg because it too will have a greater premium. So bullish or bearish, larger premium dominates, or we could use the bulls trick because you're long the lower strike. 
All right. Well, I hope that you found uh, that productive. I hope you found that productive, uh, this lecture. I have two for you to try. I have two for you to try. So here's one that uh, I would like you to try. Whoop, whoa, excuse me. I mean, before we try that, this is just an overview. So, you know, we said that uh, here's what we've talked about in today's lecture. We said that, you know, the long call might be expensive. And so you might want to sell the higher strike calls to pay for the lower strike calls. And so you can leg from a long call into a debit call spread and that's bullish. And we said, you're very foolish to just uh, short the put because we said that what you might want to do is take part of your money and buy a lower strike put just in case it blows up and somebody sticks it to you, you can stick it to the next guy. We said as a series four or nine, I would prefer you do this instead of that, right? Because this has less risk, it has less margin. And so as a four or nine, I just love credit spreads. They're just one of my go-to kind of arrows in my quiver. We said, this is just really foolish. That is just stupid, right? That's stupid because you're taking, getting limited reward and taking unlimited risk. I might as a series four say, listen, why don't you offset your obligation to sell with a choice to buy? And again, as a series four or nine, I just think that's a lot smarter. You know, I might make you do that. By the way, it also makes the margin requirement go, go away. Remember we said there's this 20% thing. And by the way, sevens, you don't need to worry about margin requirements. You know, fours and nines you do. And then long put, we said you might want to get, uh, lower your out-of-pocket costs by selling the lower strike uh, puts to pay for the higher strike puts. Okay, so uh, let's uh, review. Looks like I'm way over. You know, mom's gonna be a little upset. She wanted me to help her run some errands. I said, oh, I may be recording a lecture. It's not gonna take so long, but you know, as typical. Again, I don't mind because it's a video and you can stop, you can pause, you can rewind, you can do what you like. Okay, so let's give you one to try. Let's give you one to try. Uh, let's call this, um, uh, what do we wanna call this one? Let's call it, uh, Um, lecture practice question one. So uh, you can stop now, you can do this. And when you get it done, you do all the things I'm asking you to do here. But remember, if you do all those things, you've got my guarantee that whatever they wanna know, you've got the answer. And when you get those answers, you can either put them in the comment box on the YouTube channel, if you're watching this on YouTube, put your answers into the comment box. Say, Dean, here are my answers to lecture practice question one. And then I will respond by telling you whether you got it right or wrong. Now, if you're watching this on the subreddit, the uh, subreddit R series seven channel, you can put your answers into the there too. You can say, Dean, these are my answers for lecture practice one. You don't have to have the video there because you just tell me this, you know, I did lecture four, multiple option strategies. Here's my answers to lecture practice question one. And then I'll tell you if you got that right or wrong. And uh, let's call this uh, lecture practice question two. And same drill, same drill. If you are watching this on YouTube, you can put your answers into the YouTube comment box and I'll uh, respond and tell you whether you got it right. If you're watching this on subreddit, uh, R series seven, you can put it into the you know box there. And if I'll tell you if you got it right. Okay, so uh, I don't know if we came in here. It looks like we came in at over an hour, maybe closer to two, but uh, worthwhile. Remember, you have any questions on this stuff, uh, make sure you get questions answered. So. The remember two sevens, the vast majority of your questions are not multiple option strategies. The vast majority of your questions are the four basics, the four basics and a covered call. All right, that's it for today.